the distinction between worldview and world vision was developed by J. H. Bavinck uh, in the 1920s. And what he was trying to do in developing this was to tie up a loose end that was left in his uncle Herman Bavinck's work on Christian worldview. For his uncle Herman, a worldview is something that takes a long time to build. You don't just have it automatically. Uh, you really have to think um, carefully and um, and in a um, in a pretty rigorous way about the, the big questions of life in order to have a world and life view. But the un unanswered question that Herman left behind was, what about people who don't care about that effort um, and who seem to live a lot more passively than actively or who, who live on some kind of cultural autopilot setting without ever actually asking, um, is the way that my culture has taught me to, to live within the world true or not? Uh, so that's a big unanswered question in Herman's work on worldview. And J.H. Bavinck picks up on that in his book, Personality and Worldview, where he tries to answer that by um, affirming what his uncle had to say about worldview as something like a map that you have to, to build for yourself. But he asks the question, what about people who don't care about building that map? What, on what basis do they live? So you could think of a map as a tool of orientation. It's a navigation device, and you, you use it in a distinct way to, to navigate the world. But another kind of um, tool of orientation is a compass. And J.H. Bavinck says that most people actually live um, unexamined lives, and they're quite happy to do that until something shakes them out of that. And when you're living an unexamined life, really what you have is something more like a compass that orients you in the world. And that's a compass that you are given by your culture, by your parents, maybe by the school that you went through, by particular norms and intuitions that your culture has. And those all um, will orient your life in a certain direction. And you can use a compass um, to know which direction you're stepping in for your next step. But you can't use a compass in the same way that you use a map, which is to know that I am here and a thousand miles in that direction, there's something else there. And if I want to get from here to there, then the map is the thing that I follow. A compass can't, can't quite um, orient you in the world like that. Um, so the compass idea for J.H. Bavinck is what he calls a world vision. Uh, you have a world vision by virtue of being born in a particular time and place, and the, that immediate set of circumstances that you're born into will orient you in the world in a particular way. But that culture um, is actually giving you answers to prior worldview questions. What am I? How am I supposed to live? What is, what is a good life? Um, but it doesn't necessarily tell you that those are answers to prior questions. So you're not maybe aware that there are questions there in the first place. You just live on the basis of answers without asking, are these good answers to those questions? So for J.H. Bavinck, you have to uh, learn to critique your own world vision. Ask, is the compass a good compass? Is the way that it orients my life, is it oriented in the right direction? And um, the gospel itself is the thing that you use to ask the question of whether the orientation of my life is pointed in the right direction. And the gospel, therefore, reshapes your world vision or that the compass in the first place, and then it, re, it develops it to become um, more like a worldview. Um, and instead of just a compass, you then start to build up a map.